Thank you. So I'm Christine, and it's a great honor to be here with you today. And I look forward to sharing with you how we can mobilize people, ideas, and organizations in a way that um, is more creative, more collaborative, and more wholesome, and that makes sure that we can unlock our human potential individually and collectively, making an impact in the world, in the workplace, and in our very lives. So one day, I received a phone call of sitting at my desk working, and it was a lady from OECD in Paris, and she called me and she said, Christine, can you come and hold a talk of networking? I heard you have networked and mobilized communities, events, people from all over the world. I hesitated a little bit as she tried to convince me I was the one. I love communities, sisterhood, fellowship, belonging. But suddenly I had a little word problem. Networking, that which I thought was so pure in the beginning. I suddenly felt, isn't that been appropriated lately to something more superficial and like change in the bar. And then I thought, maybe not. Maybe it's all about the how. And in fact, it is all about the how. And I decided to go to Paris. And then later I started to decipher what is it that I do and how more than anything. And that's what I want to share with you here today, the how we can connect to each other. Because the how is what's really important. We can do things aggressively. We can also do things with love. We can do things with generosity. So the how is what connects us with the people. One other thing that was important for me, when I started up, I knew that in the world, the feminine was not in balance with the masculine. And that had consequences. There's consequences for planet, for our workplaces, and for our own very well-being. Now, I had worked in corporate banking and didn't always feel included. I traveled the world and I'd seen around everywhere how lots of people were not put in the right light. Lots of people didn't have freedom. Many places I traveled, I saw that not everybody had access to healthcare, freedom to go to school, freedom to speak and particularly not all the women and the girls. So I started to work initially with women, empower, advance girls, women all over the world from different cultures, different countries, different backgrounds. But then I realized it wasn't actually only about women. It was also about that system of control and dominance that system that shames boys from crying, that system that ridicules and certainly don't take seriously the girls when they're laughing, that was an awakening to what we can call the patriarchy. I'm still waking up to it. It's like a spell all over our society and organizations. So I wanted to do something different. So. As I was waking up to this, and as I'm still waking up to this, and the injustice in the world, I also felt an inspiration to do something. There was a third thing beside the injustice, the inspiration. There was also this sense of goodness I felt within me when I was with like-minded people in community, and when I felt connected to those other people, and also when I feel connected to myself inside, if I take a moment to be silent. If I feel connected to Earth, what's beyond, and to each other. I feel then I can trust, and then I can take risk, and that I could start my project, because I could feel safe inside. No. on this journey with this vision of actually wanting to create a world where we all could flourish, where we all had freedom, and where we could see the beauty in another and be free, I started a lot of different studies. I'm so interested in so many different things. So I started to study yoga, qigong. I learned about the yin and the yang, the shiva and the shakti, the feminine and the masculine. I realized that what's happening inside me may also have something with, with what's going on outside of me. I learned that creativity also starts with receiving, that I cannot just decide everything. 
there are things that also come my way. And I started to look at, ah, oh, how much do we value caring for each other? Do we value that equally much as we value our money? And how do we value each other and the real humanity? No, I grew up in Norway. I was quite privileged to be in that country of not only the midnight sun and the northern light, but also a society of equality, of egalitarian values. But I was called to another land. So I went to Italy. And what was that stimulation for? For me, it was that land where, through history, we have seen the great creatives. And I always felt it was so fascinating with Leonardo da Vinci. And this picture that he drew of the Vitruvian man, the universal human, let's say, is a well-known symbol of the Renaissance time. But also this time where it's not only about being only a scientist or only a humanist. But it's a symbol of we can be both creative, we can be the artist, and we can be the scientist. We can use our left brain and our right brain. And I know that Leonardo had written that he saw that the human body was a microcosmos of the larger microcosmos of the universe. How fascinating, I thought. Because I'd experienced also that many places in the workplace, everybody wanted me to be specialized to be focused on one thing. Yes, it's good to be focused on one thing at a time. But also how interesting to know many different things that can stimulate our brain, keep us more awake. And what if the microcosmos is the macrocosmos and we are all interconnected in an incredible web of life and how we interact with it and how that interacts with us is how we can operate in this world. As I wanted to make my vision come alive and we want all of you have dreams and visions I'm sure you want to see alive. I started to also on look into how can a vision also be embodied as a way of being. So I began looking at both a horizontal and a vertical way of being and operating in the world. Also Leonardo da Vinci had his like hands out and stuff. It was a connection to the ground and to the sky. And it was also out and forward. So if everything we do matters and sends out a signal, we can work on how we do things, the how. We can do things with love, with generosity, or we can do it aggressively. More than anything, we can do it in the real way, how we feel, who we are. And that red radiates, actually. We create a resonance feel around us. Everybody does that. And sometimes we work on that. We can work on overcoming an obstacle within us. That of shyness, perhaps, or a feeling I'm not good enough. That's something we work on inside of us. And outside of us, we, wor we work on learning new skills. I want to reach my goal. I have a strategy for it. And so it goes when we are connecting to people, when we want to network. OK, I want to meet a certain specific person. I can put myself in a location. I can go up and talk to that person. But sometimes it can be you wake up in the morning one day and you have an intuition. Oh, today I really need to run by this in this coffee bar before I go to work or university. And maybe as you're standing there, you start talking to a person. And that person may lead you somewhere. I had that going on once. I, went, I wanted to work. I write a paper on Japan, so I went to a particular office to look for a job. They said no. But a few weeks later, they called me about something completely different. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. If I hadn't asked the question, that would never have happened. And it wasn't what I had planned, but it opened up many new doors to something much greater. And I continue to work with Japan almost every year, ever since. And this feminine principle, or the principle of the vertical line is also a way of being in the world that makes it very joyful. It requests that you work on your mindfulness, be aware of how you sense and feel and perceive things, because often this goal orientation makes us very in the cerebral sphere of our beings. And the more synchronistic way of operating is very exciting, because all sorts of things can happen to you if you are willing to receive. 
and then you can go into the active mo mood as well. So, the personal mix you find, I invite you to reflect on and be aware of also. No. So we want to do operate in a world and know that we are part of an interconnected network. So how then do we network and how do we create also a network? Because the whole universe is the hugest network, but we want to be also part of a network that nurtures us, that makes us feel safe and good inside. So one of the things that I have noticed helps is to be aware of how you feel, of course, all the time. But also that when you are operating with people, look for or feel into what is it that inspires you and what inspires another? What makes you stimulated in your mind, but also what finds your passion in your stomach and warms your heart? And there are a couple of principles that I discovered. And one is the principle, I will call it the principle of purpose. So make sure you make sure you are with people that are different from you as often as you can. But always try to find a common purpose. Because wherever you are, I've been all over the world traveling so much, and everywhere I can find somebody that I have something in common with. And this way of looking for what we have in common instead of what's so incredibly different is a way to start finding a common ground and build bridges. And we find common purpose. But then there are moments in life when we don't have a purpose, we don't know what we, what we are here for. And sometimes in the conversation with another, our purpose becomes clear, or that of the other becomes clear, and you generously listen to that person. The principle of passion, or let's call it inspiration, is another principle. And that is a principle that drives me the most. It's the principle of lighting up of seeing when another you are in conversation with is inspired and shines and lights up. And then you generously let that person speak more about that or do more about that yourself. And then you learn to listen to that in you also. When am I feeling inspired? When am I feeling more alive? And in the moment you feel more alive, try to expand that, be more in that space, in that being of you, you know. And then the third principle is the principle of the practical. So when you are meeting with another, make sure that's new for you. Make sure you clearly say your name. Clearly find a way the other can find you, whether it's on social or in a card. And there is a part of being together that I'll use the old-fashioned word of etiquette also. Because if someone introduces you to somebody, and something good happens, it's really good to say thank you. And also, it's fantastic to be introduced. So if you know one person and you want to introduce that person to the third person, you introduce it. And that is so nice. Everybody feels so happy of that generous jest of being introduced. So what else? How do we go about even further when we consciously want to not only create a network, but be with people that, in a way that expands our mind, opens our heart, and feel more excited? What I have learned is that it's really important to be open. In fact, we can even call it to be opening, because sometimes we don't realize that in certain situations we may close, and we want to be open. And by open, I mean also try that we sometimes catch yourself. Lots of us, we all have some judgment or what they call unconscious biases. And we want to render those more conscious so we can catch them. So when you hear somebody speaking with a weird accent or is different from you, catch yourself. Say, hmm, that's interesting. Or maybe you catch yourself also thinking you're not good enough, or maybe you feel too good, or any, whatever it could be, catch it and be open, particularly open. And this way you learn more and you meet more people and you have more fun. And then be ready to connect. Talk not only about what you do, but what you're really passionate about. That always inspires people and always helps. And be ready to contribute. 
find a solution to somebody else's problem, but also share about your own problem. Also, if you need help, share it. You are valuable. You can share, and you should share. And then this is a time when this is so, so important. And then when we meet each other, we take some risk also. Share that dream, that dream that was hidden in the drawer or in your heart. You can share it. Why not? All the new things come or, or may feel like different because nobody has done it before. But that's the whole p thing of creating something new. We have to take a little bit of risk. And even if you're shy, you know, you don't need to spread it the whole world. We can talk to a few people. And then we want to commit. If you, if you say to somebody you're going to do something, you do it. You commit. I've seen again and again that most successful people, whether it's in business or in an NGO or advocacy or in science, are committers. They commit to what they say they're going to do. And at the same time, if there is something unacceptable, if there is abuse, if somebody steps over a, a line, you don't accept it. If you accept unacceptable behavior, it will in fact be reinforced. So that's an incredibly important aspect of this time. And then we want also to be light, and want to collaborate, and we want to have fun. And keeping things light helps also for others. In a time where there's very much stress going on in the world, it's easy to fall into fear. So we want to support each other in this lightness. And doing all of that, I know, guaranteed, that magic will come around, because that's just the way it works. So today I would like to encourage everybody to reach out to somebody you may not know so well and connect with them and share something about you. Because what is so great is it is possible to create another way. I know it, and you know it too. A way that's more collaborative and that is more creative where we embrace diversity, where we celebrate each and everyone's uniqueness, and where we create cultures of inclusion, inclusion the other, including ourselves also, which is very important as well. And I think in that paradigm, where we inside of us, inside every woman, every man, we grow and we take on valuing both our so-called feminine side and the masculine side, then we can create that outside in organizations and in the world at large. And as Leonardo da Vinci said, the microcosmos inside of us is the macrocosmos outside of us. And if you think about all those shiny stars up on our sky, also representing each of us, then we are all a shining star. And if we shine so bright, we will light up the world and shine together. Thank you very much.